Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Space News Pod. This is a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. I'm your host, Will Walden. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about SpaceX's lunar lander that will be transporting cargo from Earth to the moon. Not just people like Artemis 3, but a huge amount of cargo, 33,000 pounds of cargo, possibly. We're going to be talking about IFT4 and also some insight into IFT. T5. So let's get into it. First of all, let's talk about the cargo missions to the moon for SpaceX's Starship. Now, we all know that people will be landing on the moon for Artemis 3, possibly. We'll get into that, too. That's a whole other thing. Artemis 3 may be postponed because they may have to do uh, low Earth orbit tests with the Starship before they send astronauts to the moon. And that may push back the timeline of Artemis 3, just a few years. And right now it's at about 2026, but I'm expecting it to be pushed back probably till 2028. That's how NASA works. Usually if they say there's a timeline for something, it's usually the first timeline they say 2024, uh, there's a possibility that it can be pushed back to 2026 and then to 2028. And then from 2028, you never really know what's going to be happening because SpaceX is still in high production of their Starship vehicle down in Boca Chica, Starbase, Texas. And Artemis 3 is going to possibly, like I said before, send people to the moon surface. Now, not only people are going to the moon. The Artemis program says that they will be sending massive amounts of cargo to the moon so people can live and work on the lunar surface in the future. And this, um, the latest thing that NASA posted um, a couple days ago, and this article says work underway on large cargo landers for NASA's Artemis moon missions. NASA has contracted SpaceX and Blue Origin too to provide landing systems to take astronauts to the moon's surface for lunar orbit or from lunar orbit beginning with Artemis three. Agency has asked the two companies to develop cargo versions, and we kind of realized that SpaceX could do a cargo version at any time, and they kind of planned on it anyway. So this is. Just NASA saying uh, it's legit now. And this could possibly happen payload on the lunar surface <clears throat> and be in service no earlier than the Artemis 7 missions. And NASA spokesperson said it's essential that NASA has the capability to land not just astronauts, but large pieces of equipment such as pressurized rovers on the moon for maximum return on science and explorative activities. Beginning of this work now allows SpaceX and Blue Origin to leverage their respective human lander designs to provide cargo variants that NASA will need in the future. So what they're saying is that they are working with SpaceX and also Blue Origin to build landers for cargo for the moon. Like they said, um, they could possibly have rovers. Uh, they could possibly have habitats. Um, they could have equipment to mine the ice on the lunar surface so they can extract the oxygen and the water from that ice. And in the future, anything that you need to build anything on the moon could go in a starship. The thing is massive. So 33,000 pounds of payload on the lunar surface, that's a ton. Well, that's not a ton, but it's 33,000 pounds of, uh, of equipment that could be used in the future by astronauts astronauts doing exploratory missions and also science on the lunar surface. Now let's kind of kick it into the IFT four realm here. IFT four could possibly happen in the next few weeks. They will be testing the heat shield to its maximum heat on this next mission. So they're going to get to orbit hopefully for this one. I mean, it worked pretty well for Artemis three. Uh, the, the starship was in space and they started coming back down. It was a beautiful, beautiful view of the Starship as it was coming back into Earth's orbit or into Earth's atmosphere and almost burning up. Maybe it possibly burned up too much, and that's how that's why they exploded it. Um, and it could be possibly landing in the Indian Ocean in an exploded fashion for Artemis or for the uh, IFT-4 as well. So they're testing out the heat shield for IFT four, but they could possibly be testing a fuel transfer and maybe even uh, a cargo bay. We're not sure yet. They haven't released any data, but Elon has said that they are testing the heat shields. Now IFT five 
we have to go back to IFT4 for a second. IFT4, they will be landing the booster in a controlled manner, hopefully, in the Gulf of Mexico. So now that that's out of the way, IFT5, they may, Elon has said this, uh, and, and I don't know if this is going to happen, but IFT5, they may be doing a controlled landing on land at Starbase. But the land will be the Mechazilla arms and at the tower. So do you think that's going to happen? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. But could they do that for IFT5? I, I mean, if they're going to test this once in the Gulf of Mexico, it's SpaceX, of course, they'd like to go real fast and see what happens, right? But there are also repercussions for going so fast and breaking things. And if they break things at the Starbase facility where they launch rockets, uh, they could be months of uh, repairs happening in the near future. I mean, the, the ship is made out of shrapnel, basically. Once it blows up, once it hits something, it turns into just basically a, a wild amount of stainless steel shrapnel that's uh, extremely sharp. I want to stay positive about this, and I hope it really works out for IFT4 and also for the IFT5 landing. Now, let me know down in the comments below what you think about the human landing system, also uh, the cargo landing system, and IFT4 and IFT5. Let me know. If you don't have anything really to contribute, just put an emoji down there because engagement really helps the channel a lot. And also, can I ask you for a favor? Give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel because not only will you get my channel in the future, because I know you like this content, you've been listening this far, but you will also get other spaceflight reporters in your feed. That's how YouTube works. If you like something with spaceflight and if you comment on it with spaceflight and you subscribe, YouTube will send you more spaceflight reporters in the future and then you get even more Starship content. So please like, of course, subscribe because you have to, because it's YouTube. That's how it works. And also, if you can, make a comment. That'll be great. Thanks so much for watching today. I appreciate your time. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Flight four, we should, uh, if we get, you know, if fate smiles upon us, uh, we'll get through the high heating regime um, and uh, smash into the ocean at a controlled spot. Um, and then uh, hopefully be able to also do this with the, with the booster, uh, land on a, essentially a virtual tower. Um, if, if the landing on the virtual tower with the booster works, then we will actually try with Flight 5 to come back and land on the tower. No. That, that's very much a success-oriented schedule, but, uh, but it is in the realm of possibility. Um, but I would say like the, the odds of us actually being able to catch the, the booster with the Mechazilla arms this year, I think, I don't, I don't want to tempt fate, knock on wood, but I think the odds of actually catching the booster uh, with, with the tower, probably like 80, 90% this year, um, which is insane. Like actually, when we first talked about it, it sounded so batshit crazy. <laughs> We're going to have a giant, it's like literally bigger than Mechazilla from this movie. Uh, that you'd catch like, the, like the, the biggest flying object ever made with mechanical arms out of the air. But we're going to do it. So, it's good. yeah. It may not work, you know, necessarily the first time, but, it, you know, it will work. Um, so really, a Starship is, is really the key to making life multiplanetary and preserving the light of, light of consciousness. That's what it's all about. And um, it, it may end up being the most important thing that, that we ever do. I think that you, you, like the light of consciousness is like this, this tiny candle in a, in a vast darkness. And that, that candle has only been lit for a very short time and it could easily go out. So we, 